This video is sponsored by Life is Feudal MMO. More on that in a bit. If you like Ark lore, some age-old questions may arise. Like, are you the same survivor in Genesis as you were in the island through extinction? What happened to Earth after you saved it from the Titans and the Arks receded? Has Helena Deus faded from our existence? That and more will be theorized on and answered directly in this video as we talk about the Genesis expansions, what makes them so separate from the rest of the Ark story, and how it all connects. See, there isn't exactly a clear bridge in Ark Survival Evolved between the massive gap in the story of the Legacy DLCs and the Genesis expansions, so in this video I'm going to fill you in on everything. No doubt Ark Survival Ascended will attempt to bridge this gap in the future, because it would be a missed opportunity if they didn't, but for now all we can do is theorize and dive into the facts. A mix of both. The lore of Genesis 1 surprisingly does have a lot of useful stuff, it's just buried in the seemingly endless HLNA notes. That glitch had me stunkered. Help me, survivor. So with that said, buckle your seatbelts, install your antivirus, and let's explore a story deeply buried within the code of Ark. Genesis. Look around you, survivor! Everything you see is under my control! This whole place is my personal walled garden! And I think I'm due for some weeding! Before we get into the lore of Ark Genesis, I need to talk about the sponsor of this video, Life is Feudal MMO, that kindly reached out for a collaboration. Life is Feudal MMO is a huge online game with a vast world called Abella and over 37 massive regions. The entire area measures 21 kilometers by 21 kilometers, and the game itself features detailed mining, crafting, farming, construction, and more in a huge sandbox. Life is Feudal MMO has guild mechanics, an advanced economy, and no pay to win features, relying on a subscription service model. The game starts off with the player awakening in a strange land with no knowledge of their past. From there, they have to hunt, gather, make allies or enemies, and shape their future in an ever-evolving medieval feudal world. Whether you're building guilds, terraforming the world, or hunting for food, Life is Feudal is a game all about hardcore survival. If you're interested in a gritty open-world survival experience, then check out the game with the link in the description below to be among the first to experience the return of the legend Life is Feudal MMO. Now let's get back to the video. At some point along their journey, Diana and Mei Yin reached Arat Prime, but Helena Deus didn't decide to investigate the colony ship and transfer over the superluminal link until she was sure the Earth had been receded. So after waiting a long time, most likely after Mei Yin and Diana were long dead, the ones who try again finally reseeded the Earth, as I explained in the last part, and Helena Deus decided to transfer across the superluminal link, knowing that Earth was at least safe for the time being. Little did she know, the aberrant arc crashed near Arat Prime, and so the superluminal link that she used to travel from Earth all the way to the colony ship across the galaxy was left open, allowing Rockwell to travel through it himself and get onto the Genesis ship, at least with his consciousness. Once Helena Deus got to the ship, she was in the system, basically undetected at the time, which was where she made HLNA, a robotic AI companion to help guide survivors in the Genesis simulation, which would ideally help prepare them for something called the Arrival, and ensure the Genesis mission was a success too. Helena seemed to really want to cover all her bases, ensuring the survival of humanity through the Reseed Protocol and the arrival with the Genesis Project. She left after creating HLNA, likely fading out of existence not long after. But Helena's greatest mistake here was leaving the superluminal link open, because her old colleague she thought was long dead did everything he could to infect his way to the top aboard a new vessel, one he would come to see as his own. With that said, once Rockwell got to the ship, nobody necessarily knew right away. You might be wondering, who was on board this ship? Well, the people consisted of two major distinct groups. The crew members, which were regular people living mostly regular lives, taking care of the environments and making sure everything was running smoothly, and then you had the colonists, which were on board the ship, sleeping in cryo chambers and who were meant to be prepared for the arrival, which basically meant when the ship eventually found a planet considered habitable and could colonize it with super epic Vin Diesel level strength. 
That said, when it came to the crew members, one dirt scientist in particular was especially important, and her name was Nita. She lived her whole life on the ship, working as a second-class agricultural engineer, and in her free time she would spend hours creating virtual worlds and scenarios within the Genesis simulation. I'd probably do that too if I was stuck in a giant spaceship blasting across the galaxy at an incomprehensible distance from Earth. One day, though, Nita discovered transhuman interference inside the code of Genesis, which we can understand as Helen Deus is doing. The disturbance was linked, Nita found, to a new robotic AI that was not there to begin with, and after confronting the thing inside the sim, Nita learned its name was HLNA. It spoke to her, in fact, and explained that Helen Deus had created her and that HLNA had been there for about 3,000 cycles. If we assume a cycle is a full day-night, that would make it about eight years in chip time at least. Nita acknowledged eight years was hardly a dent in the amount of time the ship had been cruising through space, but nonetheless, after discovering HLNA, issues in the real-world colony ship began to appear. Once Rockwell got to the colony ship, he seemed to have waited until HLNA was discovered to actually start to take over, specifically focusing on the frontal ring and the Genesis simulation. With his bizarrely fluent hacking skills, once inside the sim, Rockwell began to override security protocols and in the process deactivated multiple AIs which oversaw the simulation's five biomes. Except he wasn't able to get one. See, the master AI of the ocean, called Mudder, deactivated herself beforehand because this would mean she could still be summoned and activated by survivors, theoretically. Big brain move right there. Speaking of survivors, once HLNA was set on helping the colonists, she did just that. You were one of those colonists, and the simulation allowed you to take a crack at it. You met the criteria. By no means were you the one who tried again, at least not in the same flesh, but it's actually up to you and your own headcanon as a player to decide if you are the same character, at least with the same memories of your journeys back on the arcs. Regardless, you were determined, and HLNA took a liking to that. But either before you started your journey or during the journey itself, you hallucinated. A lot. Perhaps your similarities to the ones who try again were more than just determination, because you hallucinated about distant arcs, a woman named Helena and her friends. Even though it seemed like a long dream, HLNA said she could feel Helena's memories from so long ago across various arcs and journeys she went on. This place is dangerous. If you don't starve, the dinos will get you or the environment, or who knows what else. You though, I got a good feeling about you. After all, they're putting you in the Genesis simulation for a reason, huh? My creator, Helena, used to be a survivor like you. If I observe you, maybe I can understand her better. These stories gave you a bigger picture, a better understanding of a distant, yet similar plan. A plan to save humanity. But then, you woke up, at least as much as you can wake up, inside the simulation itself. Through braving seemingly unfair and incredibly dangerous biomes segmented off into secluded zones of their own, you learned what the simulation was all about. You were being prepared in some of the most hostile environments imaginable, and right there with you was HLNA. Throughout the sim, HLNA guided you along as you uncovered glitches, anomalies in the system that didn't seem like they were supposed to be there. These glitches gave you hints towards their origin. They were being caused by breaches to security systems, and unsurprisingly, these were Rockwell's doing. Though the simulation had no mention of Rockwell, you would eventually come to know the name of the Master Controller, his alias. The glitches were becoming more volatile, and specific types of old human databases were being accessed by Rockwell, as he learned everything he could to develop an unstoppable plan to corrupt the colonists stored in the cryo chambers aboard the ship, and force them into an army of corrupted human avatars in the simulation, and eventually in the real world as his servants. Which brings us to one colonist in particular, one of the few that began to wake up from Rockwell's tinkering early. He was asked by HLNA in the simulation to help, but he decided to listen to Rockwell instead, and left the sim prematurely. His name was Gabriel, and his personality was split between a gold rush prospector from 1849 and an occultist from the Roman Principate, a gnarly combo, but one that was not supposed to happen. As you can imagine, combining two separate people from different time periods into one body is probably not a good idea. A fast track to an aneurysm or something. But after Gabriel got out of the simulation, he made it to the surface of the back end ring, Eden. 
This was when Nita, who was at this point horrified of the corruption happening in the frontal ring and instructed to hide in the tunnels under Eden, discovered Gabriel and felt compelled to help him. She had lost all communication with her fellow crewmates, and having done research earlier when the corruption was spreading, she knew things were dire. It was like a full-on alien invasion. Nita spoke to Gabriel through his helmet and instructed him to head into the tunnels where they met up. She introduced herself, and Gabriel was relatively friendly, albeit a bit detached. Nita was determined to do everything she could to stop the corruption and save her crewmates. So she and Gabriel went back to the surface of Eden and grabbed some striders. At this point, Nita was heading into the corrupted ring, and nobody could stop her. Gabriel stuck with Nita, and they entered Rockwell's garden, finding crewmates strung about like effigies, a horrifying sight. Not long after, the pair was chased by shadow mains, and their striders could hold them off just long enough for them to escape into a hatch, falling and slipping into Rockwell's proliferation. Gabriel passed out, and when he came to, he was in a large room next to Nita. In front of them was what looked like a man tied up with a web of meat and tentacles. Rockwell asked them to join him as his servants. When they declined, he decided they didn't have a choice. Gabriel tossed Nita an element-based knife he had made before he was grabbed and torn away. Nita likely was able to escape initially into a type of command center where she was able to set up a ring separation sequence before likely meeting her end as well. That sequence, while not being finalized, was prepped and would come in later as an essential key. After all of that happened, let's switch back to the simulation, where you, unaware of what was happening in the outside world, were beginning to get a handle on your mission. While all but one of the master AIs were effectively deleted, the biomes themselves in the Genesis simulation still required tests to be overcome. So you took the tests. You did your best. You had to work with others sometimes, because submissions were literally not designed to be possible with a single PERSON! <clears throat> Once you were ready, you braved the depths of the ocean biome and fought against its master AI, Mudder, a giant fish creature with swarms of electric eels. But no matter how many times you died, you had it in you to keep trying, to come out on top. And you did, as you slayed Mudder and reaped the rewards. Yeah, rewards like the tech sensor, I love that one. You had so many missions to do, but eventually, you succeeded in all of them. You had passed the tests, and HLNA explained that you were finally ready to enter the system route and activate the arrival protocol. This took you and your companion into the final confrontation with the master controller. Rockwell's avatar. There are lots of rather pathetic taunting from both HLNA and XX Master Controller Pussy Slayer XX, and fighting off hordes of corrupted avatars and dinotars, you obtained code keys which were likely the key jewels that HLNA had told you about throughout your time exploring. These allowed you to hack your way through the fight and take him down. <laughs> Genesis Welcome to the 
real world. The other survivors are still trapped in the simulation, but we're free. Bugger! The corruption's here too. Apparently it followed us from the simulation. But that's impossible. We might be the only ones awake. So let's get geared up and deal with the corruption before it spreads. We should figure out which part of the colony should we're in. If we just... Oh! As Agelene did her best to save you from his clutches, you began to hallucinate again. You dreamt of those same arcs Helena and her friends had explored. I can remember meeting a bunch of survivors for the first time around these parts. Nerva. Rockwell. Mei Yin. Did Helena leave me all her memories? The trials they faced. The enemies they made. This is where I gave a name to the precious metal that set me on my path to godhood. Edmundium. I wonder, has this puppet told you anything about its creator? I never understood Ms. Walker's affinity for the creatures on these arcs. Now that I'm creating beasts of my own, I admit, I'm learning the appeal. You dreamt of Earth. Was it still your home? Was it even real? I can remember Helena fighting despair when she arrived here and saw this place state of it. To finally set foot on her home world again after so long away, and find it's been left in desolation. Near the end of your delirious visions, you even dreamt of the Genesis Sim, and the time you spent there. Popped back into the delusion again, did we? I do hope I didn't thrash you about too much out there. Knock you into a coma or anything. Still. While you're wandering around in dreamland, might be worth refreshing your memory of how much control I have over it. Was it all for nothing? I can't help noticing that you're still hallucinating. Could it be that there's some motive to your delirium? No. That would imply that I've underestimated you in some way, and I assure you that you are well beneath my estimation. If Rockwell had so easily taken you right after waking up, were you even worthy after everything you'd been training for? All the while, Rockwell taunted you. Pray I don't take notice of you again. But then suddenly, you could hear HLNA's voice in the background. Interesting that you're still able to access this simulation remotely. Interesting, but unhelpful. That's enough time in the simulation for you. You really need to shift your focus to the outside world, mate. There's a colony ship in mortal danger needs saving. So wake up, Survivor. We've got heaps to do. It was time to wake up. You had to. So with all your determination, as HLNA pleaded for you to respond, you left the void and came to. Your armor kept you mostly in one piece. So, quick update. This isn't a simulation. We're really on a ginormous spaceship. And the ship's been taken over by... <laughs> now what are you two little gnats up to? This is to be mine. Okay, time to get away from all these tentacles and prying eyes. This might feel a bit weird. A bright light pierced your vision as you materialized onto the surface of one of the Genesis ship's rings. 
H and I delved further into what you and her would need to do. The mission was rather similar to what you had to do in the simulation. Complete missions, take down Rockwell. HLNA didn't even have to ask you to begin. We knew what was at stake at this point, and so you got right to it. Completing mission after mission after mission, each one chipping away at your goal piece by piece. You uncovered new tools that were at your disposal. Tech weaponry opening up, new forms of dealing damage to your enemies, or healing the damage done to your allies. You tamed new creatures you'd never seen before. You uncovered explorer notes left behind of those crewmates that had tried so hard to do what you were doing now, and you ultimately ventured into Rockwell's garden, the frontal ring. Things there were different, and not the nice kind. You fought mind-controlling noggin goblins, carnivorous plants, and familiar yet unseen variants of existing creatures. You explored Rockwell's proliferation, the same meat ducks that Nita and Gabriel had met their fates inside. And finally, after as much experience as you could garner, conquering such an unpredictable, apocalyptic environment, and gathering a stock of mutagen, weapons, and creatures, you were ready to beam into the ship's core, where the final form of the twisted man had been festering. You teleported into a kind of command center, likely the same one Nita had made it into when the separation procedure was created. HLNA was able to look at that procedure and keep it in mind in case it was necessary. You walked down the dark, cold halls until you began stepping on a floor of meat. Rockwell's heads began to speak to you, taunting and laughing. And once you made it into the airlock, a showdown was initiated. Gone, beg and plead. I promise I won't think less of you. Nothing could prepare you for the kind of maniacal strategy Rockwell employed to take you down. But you used your skill and cunning just as you had before to adapt. This is where you fall to your knees just like all the other ones. And I'm afraid it's far too late for you to try scurrying back out again. <laughs> your weapons are pitiful against me! You are nothing but an ant trying to bite at the toes of a god! I needed a new crew for my ship since the original ones were torn to pieces. Something tells me this lot will be better listeners and much better behaved. You really couldn't just cooperate and die. After taking down his nodes, you're vermin. Nipping at my ankles. Fending off his servants. Appreciate a little artistic license. And wounding him mortally. <laughs> HLNA deployed an exomech for you to deliver a final blast. Do this and you do your precious mission. Because I assure you, I will take this ship down with me. I'm all over this ship now and I can't be destroyed. Certainly not by the likes of you. <laughs> I can't be defeated by the likes of you! No, no! I have this vessel, and it is me! Damn! I should have calculated for this possibility. I must have missed a transform on the 15th statistical outcome matrix. Uh, simply put, Rockwell's embedded himself too deeply into the ship's primary systems. They're failing along with him. There's only one way to ensure this all ends here. Sorry, mate. I can't come with. And I'm almost out of time to back myself up. You'll do just fine on your own out there. You're a survivor.
why are you still here? Staying behind to gloat? Edmund, I'm here to help you end this nightmare. You did this to me for wanting the same power she squandered. Well, I've survived worse. I promise you, I will find a way out of this, I will! No, you won't. It's much too late for that. It's so bright! Helena? I'm afraid! She knew. Survivor, this is my last message to you, to be relayed in the event of my deactivation. I was only an artificial construct when we first met, just a shadow of someone who lived a long time ago. But in our time together, I got to become something new, someone new, not Helena, HLNA. Thank you for that. I wish I could find the words to tell you how much it meant to me. <sighs> Human language is so imprecise. But I need you to do something else now. Find your own path. Your own destiny. Build a new world here. A better world. And who knows? Maybe two lost souls can still meet again somewhere. Out among the stars. Goodbye, my friend. With that, your mission as the Genesis survivor had been seen through, and your exomech plummeted towards what would be the new home of what was left of humanity on this side of the galaxy, a planet that was later dubbed a rat. Can we theorize about Arc 2? Yes. Will I be doing that in this video? No, but rest assured there will be much more to cover in the future, especially with ASA unveiling two new expansions. But that is of course something we will only find out after ASA's launch near the end of October. Fingers crossed. I think the lore of Genesis had some mighty shoes to fill if you think about it. The story up to this point was so deep and there was so much there that it's impressive they managed to make something as cohesive as they did. And I hope that at this point you have a good understanding of what differentiates the Legacy Arc story from the Genesis expansions. I'm proud to say that this is the final episode of the series of Arc Lore Explained, and the next one is going to be a supercut featuring all seven of them, along with lots of revisions and changes to make it more smooth, more epic, and more arc. So with that said, smash the subscribe button below to stay up to date on my latest videos where I'll be diving more into the lore. And as always, I'll talk to you next time. Bye everyone.